Hi everyone, I thought we could sit down together and ignore the outside world for a few minutes and talk about some books. Um, come, join me. I hope you're all doing okay, and if you're not, I'm sending you lots of love. Um, today I want to talk to you about all of the books I have bought recently or have requested for review, and as usual, all of the books will be linked in the description box down below if you would like to go and find out more. So first off, I have quite a few books for from Granta. Um, I had a meeting with them recently and they were talking to me about all of the new books that they were bringing out, and these were the ones that really piqued my interest. First off is this novel here called Pew by Catherine Lacey. It's about a person who wakes up in a church not knowing who they are or how they got there. The local congregation call them Pew because they woke up in a church and they're not sure if Pew is a boy, a girl, a near adult or a child, what they've run from and why they have arrived in their small town and they become frustrated with the fact that they can't put Pew into any box. So it's about our need to define people and have answers and what happens when we don't have the answers and the whispers and storytelling that build up around that. I think it sounds really, really interesting. Next is a non-fiction book called Notes from an Apocalypse by Mark O'Connell. Um, he is the author of To Be a Machine, which won the Welcome Prize in 2018. And in this new book, he travels around the world speaking to people who think the end of the world is coming and have thought that for a long time. So environmentalists, but also billionaires who want to live on Mars, people who've been building bunkers, um, certain religious people who believe that there's so much sin in the world these days that we're all going to be punished. Um, this sounds like a Louis Theroux documentary in a book and I'm very much looking forward to reading it. There's another non-fiction book that they're publishing in July, yes July, which I think sounds amazing. It's called Undreamed Shores, Five Women Who Sought the World by Frances Larson. Sarah Moss says that she loves it, I'm not sure that I need to know more than that, but it is about five women who went to Oxford University at the beginning of the 20th century and it tracks their lives through women's suffrage, through two world wars and into the later half of the 20th century and how they travelled all around the world. It says, in the wastelands of Siberia and in the uncharted interiors of New Guinea, amid uprisings along the Nile and on remote Easter Island, these five women found new freedoms and bore witness to vanishing worlds. Through their work, they challenged the myths that constrained their lives and proved that women could be explorers and scientists too. Yet when they returned to England, they found loss, madness and regret waiting for them. The final book from Granta that I have to show you is this one here by Andres Barber, who is the author of Such Small Hands. And this is his latest book called A Luminous Republic. And it's translated from Spanish by Lisa Dillman. It's coming out in June. And this sounds a little bit like Pew by Catherine Lacey. I'm sure they're very different, but a similar premise in that people start arriving in a small town. So in this novel, children start arriving and no one knows where they're coming from. It says aged between nine and 13, they are covered in dirt and they are hungry. They beg for food, commit small acts of vandalism, play games that don't seem to have any rules and communicate with each other in a strange language. Next, I bought the collected poems of Michael Donaghy. I don't think I've read one of his books before. I've seen his poems in various different places, but I wanted to purchase this because Kavar Akbar tweeted one of his poems the other day. I'll link that in the description box down below and I just thought it was beautiful and I needed more of that in my life. Um, I will speak about it once I have read it. Next I was sent a review copy of The Discomfort of Everything by Marika Lucas Freshnevelde. This is currently long listed for the Man Booker International Prize and it's translated from the Dutch by Michelle Hutchinson and this just sounded like it was a bit of a word feast. Even the blurb sounds beautiful. It says, 10 year old Jazz has a unique way of experiencing the universe. The feeling of udder ointment on her skin is protection against, against harsh winters. The texture of green warts like capers on migrating toads. The sound of blush words that aren't in the Bible. But when a tragic accident ruptures the family, her curiosity warps into a vortex of increasingly disturbing fantasies, unlocking a darkness that threatens to derail them all. Faber also sent me a review copy of Natalie Diaz's new collection called Post-Colonial Love Poem, which is coming out in the summer. It's coming out in June. Um, she's the author of um, When My Brother Was an Aztec, which 
I want to read before I read this one, but I've heard such great things about her work. I also bought a copy of The Yellow House by Sarah M. Broom, which I've been meaning to do for ages. This was actually one of my most anticipated books of 2019. So this is a non-fiction book and it says, in 1961, Sarah M. Broom's mother, Ivory May, a fiercely determined and recently widowed 19-year-old, invested her life savings in a shotgun house in the then promising neighborhood of a New Orleans East. It was the height of the space race and the area was home to a major NASA plant. And then it follows her family and her family's links with this house. And I have heard nothing but amazing things about it. I also received the Korean editions of Franklin's Flying Bookshop and Franklin and Luna Go to the Moon in the post, which look like this, which is really cool. And if you purchase, the Korean editions of these books. You also get a little writing kit, a little letter kit that's Franklin and Luna themed. And you also get a whole load of stickers, which I just think is really awesome. And the publishers very kindly sent me some of those stickers too, which I'm going to, I want to use because obviously I want to use them, but also I just, I don't know where to put them. I want to keep them in a drawer and just never use them because they're so precious. I love it. I received the latest issues of the three literary journals I'm subscribed to. I'm often asked for recommendations for poetry journals, short story journals, um, and these are the three that I am subscribed to, but I also buy individual issues of other magazines too. So this is Poetry. This is by far the most affordable poetry journal that I have come across, and it's amazing. I'll link it down below. And the two UK-based ones that I love and I'm constantly subscribed to are Poetry London and The Rialto. Um, these ones come out three times a year, whereas Poetry comes out every month. I received a review copy of Jess Kidd's new book. She writes for adults, but this one is middle grade and it's called Everyday Magic and it is coming out on the 4th of June. It is about nine-year-old Alfie Blackstack um, and his parents have met a very unfortunate end and now he's living with his aunts who he thinks are chemists but then turn out to be witches and then a Fagan family circus arrives in town. So that sounds like lots of fun. I was also sent a finished copy of The Crying Book by Heather Crystal, which I really want to read hopefully in March. This is a non-fiction book about um, depression and sadness and grief um, and and Heather Crystal's writing is just beautiful. I love her poetry, so I'm very, very eager to read her nonfiction. I also gave into the hype. I wasn't going to do this, but then I was watching Jessie Burton's Instagram stories and she just sold this book to me all over again. I have tried to read Wolf Hall before, but a very, very, very long time ago, and I'm gonna try again. Um, do I need to say anything about Wolf Hall? Probably not. So I'll just say that, that I bought it and I am going to give it another go. Wish me luck. Tell me if you have read it because I think it really divides people. Some people love it and some people just cannot get on board with it. So let me know which side <laughs> you happen to be on. Lawrence King very kindly sent me this review copy of Around the World in 80 Trees and this is all about folklore and trees and just learning all about them and it's really beautifully illustrated as well. It's got a quote on the back from, from Judy Dench. I've never seen her blurb a book before. Apparently she loves it. But I, I am always interested in the folklore of trees and how plants have been used in medicine and all of the superstitions surrounding them. So this is gonna be a really great resource. I was also sent a review copy of The Oracle Code by Marika, who I met in the Netherlands a couple of years ago. We did some events together at Dutch Comic Con. We're both very passionate about this ability and disfigurement in the media. And this is her take on DC's Barbara Gordon, who's a wheelchair user. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what she does with this story. I was sent a review copy of this, which came out this month, The Beauty of Their Youth by Joyce Heinfeld. This is a short story collection. It has five short stories inside it. And the press release says that in this collection, the stories question the reliability of memory, how our history impinges on our present, or what risks are worth taking. But each story captures moments in people's lives when they are most vulnerable. The final book that I have to show you today is All the Little Places by Sophie Shilito. And this one seems to be very poetic. Lots of different fragments stitched together fairy tales. It says, All the Little Places takes a train ride from the rural village through the dark and mysterious wood, past the ancient chalk pit and the dead lying in the cemetery, over the salty river and into the city. I'm hoping this is going to be a little like 
what I hoped folk was going to be. Um, just a narrator who is wandering from place to place, picking up on all these little elements of fairy tale and folklore, and then relaying them to us. The reader. Um, so those are all the books that I wanted to show you today. As I said, I'll link all of them in the description box down below. I hope you're all doing okay. I'm sending you lots of love and I will speak to you very soon. Lots of love. Bye.